Each year, Microsoft Research hosts hundreds of influential speakers from around the world, including leading scientists, renowned experts in technology, book authors, and leading academics, and makes videos of these lectures freely available. We've had the benefit of some of her students who've worked with us, and now we're going to hear. She, she's giving us a very general talk, and I'm thrilled it's a general talk. So people who want details have to ask questions later, but they have to do it fast because she's only here for the day. She's going to be talking about algorithmic performance in complex networks. Okay, thank you very much, Jennifer, for hosting this. This is work that I've been doing in the last uh, few, four years now. Uh, with my group mostly at Georgia Tech. So um, the internet uh, is of course a remarkable phenomenon. I'm sure you've all seen pictures of this graph. I'll tell you what this particular graph is. It's a remarkable phenomenon uh, that involves graph theory in a very natural way. And uh, here at Microsoft I've you know, heard several people talking about the web graph. And it gives rise to new questions and new models. Uh, the graph that I have studied the most, and the reason is, is because it's a graph that I had data for, is uh, the, uh, the internet. It's, this is not the web. It's the internet. It's the routing level at the level of autonomous systems. So every link, you can think of it as an ISP. So it's, 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 um, um, it's a domain that has full control of what happens within that domain. So Microsoft will be a, a, a node. Uh, AT&T will be a node, Georgia Tech will be a small node down here, okay. And the reason this is, uh, by the way, this graph uh, has today about 17 or 18,000 nodes, so it's very appropriate to have students working on this graph because these are numbers they can handle very easily. Um, and there is a link between uh, two nodes that, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, if you give them, you know, 50 million or 1 billion, you know. <laughs> no, I mean, 20,000 is a very small number, you know, sparse graphs, sparse graphs with 5 million nodes you can do in 15 minutes, you know. <laughs> okay, so, and, and, okay, so, so, so the nodes are autonomous systems, okay, independent entities, and there's a link the, uh, connecting two nodes uh, if there is direct exchange of traffic, and this is a virtual um, uh, link, it's not a physical link, it's just that there has been a direct contract between Microsoft and AT&T that you will route traffic for me, okay? And probably there is one with MCI and probably you guys have a high degree in this graph, okay? Uh, the reason it is an extremely interesting uh, layer of the internet is because it involves all these ISPs. All functions, in particular the routing protocol, all functions happen in a decentralized way. There is no centralized authority. And if this level breaks, everything breaks. So this, for example, in the new, uh, what do they call it, clean slate internet effort of the NSF is the number one priority to guarantee uh, security and integrity of routing at this level. And today it happens, you know, in a slightly um, Okay, so there is no guarantee that it is correct. There is no guarantee that if all the machines fail, tomorrow you'll be able to bring them all up. So this is the graph um, that I've started working with. And uh, now, now, now note that this is a graph that was doing a very particular, um, a very particular task. It was a routing network, okay? So the objects that I study, so when you talk about complex networks, I mean, you know, some people talk about biological networks, some people talk about, um, about social networks. These are networks much more difficult to analyze mainly because you don't know what is the main function that they do. You know, if you see a biological network, you know, why, okay, so you know the diameter is four, so what did you learn, you know? So, um, so what we are studying in my group is search and routing networks, like the web, the internet, peer-to-peer -peer networks, ad hoc, ad hoc ne networks, for which the function is very concrete. It's searching or routing networks. And of course, these are applications that are pervasive and scale at an unprecedented rate. And what we want, uh, what we're really uh, trying to find is parameters hopefully predictive of network performance. So these networks, because this data is extensive and they make very nice pictures, you know, 
you know, people have, uh, in the last, uh, I don't know, maybe, maybe less than 10 years, maybe seven years, you know, they've started measuring everything about them. But you cannot, it, it doesn't make sense to measure everything about them. You want to measure parameters that are predictive of network performance. And this is, of course, important in performance uh, and analysis evaluation in networking, and it's important in simulation and design and, and so on and so forth. So coming back to the network that I have studied the most, and this is another, uh, another image of it. Here, here I think it is colored according to link degree. Here it is colored according to countries. Blue is, of course, the United States. Uh, uh, green, uh, red. I really like it if the United States is that blue rather than red. <laughs> <laughs> red. Red is Germany. Actually, that's a wonderful comment. Yeah, I'll use it in my next talk. Yeah, OK. So the first observation uh, about these networks is that um, they were sparse graphs. So um, the expected degree of this graph, as we have seen it scale from 500 nodes to 17,000 nodes that it has today, the, 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 the average degree has remained four. It's an extremely small number. It's like the average degree on the web is like eight or nine. And it remains eight or nine. So, okay? so these are extremely small graphs, extremely sparse graphs. But uh, there is a very large uh, variance on the degrees. They're not regular graphs, okay? So no sharp concentration, and this has come to be known as a power law because if you do the log, log, plot, so on an a one axis you do the log of the degrees and the axis the log of the frequencies, you get a few vertices that have extremely high degree and then lots and lots and lots of vertices that have smaller degree in sharp contrast with uh, erdos uh or regular uh, type of random graph models where you have sharp concentration around the mean. And it, has also, it had also been measured in the first measurements about these graphs. And these this were not only for the internet, these were also for the, for the web, uh, that uh, they had the, so, the so-called small world phenomenon. So small world phenomenon is like a <laughs> folklore. So a lot of people say it means that it has small diameter, but it has clustering, which you know you expect from a you know social network. It does have small diameters, it's a six degree of separation notion, but it has clustering. You know, we all people are more clustered than. Okay, so instead, but the 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 question is, you know, are these metrics predictive? You know, metrics like what is the expected degree? Or you know what is the day? Are are they predictive or explanatory of network function, or is or is a power law observation by itself predictive or explanatory uh, of network function? And the main themes. Okay, so so let's see what would be the networking questions, and let's try to derive what would be a metric that is explanatory and predictive of network function. So let's see what questions would be asked in networking okay so uh, they would ask you know how does delay scale um, in routing so as the network has scaled from 700 nodes to you know 17,000 nodes how ha how does delay scale packet drop uh, are resources used efficiently is uh, their load balancing does the network uh, evolve towards monopolies so is it the case that the largest degrees uh, attract you know m most of the business of the traffic of the network. And all of these questions at a certain level of abstraction uh, can be stated are, are questions about routing congestion. So let me abstract in one shot and say like this. I have a graph on n nodes. And what I want to route is one unit of flow between each pair of nodes. So the total flow is n squared. And I'm going to do optimal routing. And congestion is going to be the flow on the most loaded link. Okay. So this could be anything between n log n, for example, which it is if I had an expander graph, and n squared, which would be if I had a tree, right, where all the paths from the left would have to go through the root and go through the right. And this looks like a tree graph somehow. So, 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 so this is one question that has to do uh, with congestion. Here are more questions. So if you're, uh, if you're doing, uh, if, you have to do, if you have to deal with searching, how fast can you crawl the web? So it makes a big difference if you can 
crawl it in order n steps where n is the number of nodes or order n square or n cubed steps if you're Google or I, I guess if you're Microsoft <laughs> or uh, can you uh, search a peer-to-peer -peer network with low overhead I mean people are searching peer-to-peer -peer networks and the overhead is is killing them are there strategies to improve crawling and searching so this is about routing, this is about searching, and this is the last category of questions about design, and it has to do very much with a clean slate internet, is uh, how can you maintain a well-connected topology, which is, these are going to be very dynamic networks, uh, you know, okay, so in a distributed and, and, and dynamic way. And, and my main claim is that for all these questions, uh, there is one metric which is relevant, and that is that the underlying topology of the network does not have bottlenecks like this. So if you have, you know, half of the world and the other half of the world connected with one link, of course it is going to cause congestion, of course it is going to delay your crawling, and so on. And of course this metric in this audience I don't need to explain. Okay, so it is conductance, uh, and it is, um, so, 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 okay, let me just take one minute. So there's a notion of a volume of a set, which is the sum of the degrees that a set has. So you take a bipartition um, of the vertices of the graph and you take the side which has the smallest volume, okay, and on the new and you have the fraction which on the numerator has how many links cross the cut divided by how many links are inside the cut. So okay, so that's that's conductance. And uh, it has been established in you know seminal uh, papers that this is relevant to um, for example, congestion, for example, crawling, and I guess it was. But crawling, I don't quite understand because if I, will I explain. know there's a congestion, there are sort of your congestion. I mean, if I know there's only one link from uh -huh. the red to the blue internet, uh -huh. and I've identified this link, what, what do I care? No, but usually you don't know this. You're crawling in a space which you don't know. Right? So what you want to do is that you want to have preemptively algorithms that maintain the space without bottlenecks so that you never get stuck. So in a peer-to-peer -peer network, which is completely distributed and which, by the way, Microsoft, oh, in peer-to-peer, yeah, -peer, which Microsoft use, actually my, my networking student, Christos Gazidis, works in Microsoft in, in Cambridge in the networking group, and they do peer-to-peer -peer networks and they, you know, they they send some bet application, I don't know, I lost track of, you know, but, but, but there are peer-to-peer -peer networks and it's completely distributed and you don't know what the bottleneck is. So you want to have algorithms that maintain the network without bottlenecks. Okay. Okay, so the relevant metric is conductance, but unfortunately conductance is NP-complete to um, uh, compute. Uh, the good thing is that there is another metric which is the second eigenvalue of, I will not bother with the lazy random walk, of a suitable, of a suitable normali normalization of the adjacency matrix of the graph. So you take the adjacency matrix, it is very important to normalize it. If you don't normalize it, you're not getting information about clusters or sparse cuts. You're getting information about other things. But if you do a normalization like a, a stochastic normalization or a Laplacian, then you get um, a very good connection between um, second eigenvalue and conductance. So for example, uh, if the second eigenvalue is bounded away from one, so, 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 so the eigenvalues are normalized in the interval 0, 1. So if the second eigenvalue is bounded away from one, so is conductance. And you get a lot more information because uh, the eigenvectors associated with large eigenvalues um, so, so in the, these are shadows of the sets with bad conductance. So if you, if you look at the eigenvector associated with a second eigenvalue, then you can, you know, you see the, the part that has most of the pluses and the part has most of the minuses, and you do a cut somewhere, which is typically a heuristic, uh, then you can find uh, a set with a bad cut. Okay, and the good thing is that, um, the second, the, 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 the principal eigenvalues, the second, the third, the fourth, you can compute as many eigenvalues as you want, you know, as long as they're big enough, it means that the corresponding cluster is significant. <coughs> so, 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 so computing eigenvalues and eigenvectors is computationally soft. So it relies on linear algebra, it can be done in linear time, 
And MATLAB can do a few million nodes sparse graphs in a matter of minutes. Okay, so so that's good. Okay, so that means that definitely you can analyze uh, fairly large networks using linear algebra in good time. All right. So what we did is we um, took not only the second. So okay. So this is these are three graphs. All three, uh, all three represent the internet, and the plots are when it had 700 nodes, when it had 3,000 nodes, and when, when it had 15,000 nodes. And we plotted the first 100 eigenvalues. So you say, why the first 100? Why not just the second? Well, I mean, it's a real graph. You know, what if there was the, you know, the second was very high just because there was a disconnection between, you know, Europe, or be between the U.S. and the rest of the world? Okay, so when you plot enough eigenvalues, you get information <laughs> about enough <laughs> clusters. And I mean, it is surprising the invariance that you get in the high. And by the way, this is a very standard method in data mining. And it is surprising, you know, the invariance that you get in the first hundred eigenvectors of the internet. And what it, what it indicates is, as the network has grown from 700 to 15,000 nodes, its principal eigenvalues have remained the same, so you don't have congestion. So crawling, I mean, so ran, you know, whatever good effects lack of congestion has, you're getting them. And uh, we compare to a random graph. There are several random graph models. I'll talk about them in a minute. So we compare them to a random graph. And of course, in a random graph, the same thing happens. As we know, random graphs have good conductance, you know. So, so for the same number of nodes, the three plots are the same. but they are lower than what it is on the internet, which means that uh, uh, the internet has constant conductance, but larger than that of a random graph. And um, okay, smaller than, uh, uh, than that of, of a random graph. And um, so this is the lambda, not the one minus. Yeah, this is the lambda. Yeah. So, so random graphs have smaller lambda, so they have better conductance. Okay. So this is also another point of view of the small world phenomenon. So rather than saying, you know, small diameter but clustering, and you know, diameter and clustering are like apples and oranges. Okay. So here you can say in one shot that uh, uh, non-shift, you know, constant spectrum, but you know, in a random graph, shifted away from what it is on the real graph. You know, so 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 invariant spectrum, but shifted upwards. Okay, so this was uh, uh, this was uh, this is this this was experimental work. Um, uh, you know, then of course we want to do the theory, so that is theory in agreement with practice. And the point is that beyond today's network, we want to predict. You know how the network will behave in the future. And that raises the question, what are suitable network models to study in theory? You know, how does conductance or the second eigenvalue uh, scales? And, and, and for this, random graphs are well accepted uh, good candidates, even though there are other models, optimization models, which are also very good, but incredibly hard to analyze. Good luck. <laughs> so, um, so I will talk about, so, 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 so the work now is to try to establish that what you observe in practice, that, that the conductance is constant, that the second eigenvalue is constant, agrees with reasonable random graph models for these graphs. And I will uh, say this for, for, um, yeah, for, two, for two random graph models. And they're both very well known. The first one is growth with preferential attachment. So it says that the grow, graph grows one vertex at a time. And uh, so suppose this is the graph at time t. And the new vertex attaches to existing vertices, uh, not, for example, uniformly at random, but prob with probability uh, proportional to its existing degree. So, so this vertex attracts a new vertex with probability 5 over some of the degrees, and this with probability 3 over some of the degrees. And uh, this is the rule, OK? And this is how the graph grows, growth with preferential attachment. And it's an old model uh, that has been rediscovered, has been analyzed 
uh, by Bolabash, right, or Iordan. Uh, yeah. I, I mean, this was the first really formal analysis of of the model, and and it has great technical difficulty, which is due mostly on the dependencies introduced at every step of this of this stochastic process. Okay, so so it's not like every edge exists with certain probability, like an Erdos-Remy graph. So here, uh, where this vertex attaches depends on you know what you know the whole past that happened. Uh, and if you want to show uh, expansion or c c conductance, the minimum degree is 2, because if the degree is 1, then it's a 3, and it's easy to show that you have a uh, bad separator. So, and, and, and notice that if the degree with which a new vertex attaches is 2, uh, then the average degree is going to be 4, right? which is the degree of the internet. Okay? So, 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 so I will show conductance for this model. And I believe that the degree of the internet is 4, because it's the minimum number that is necessary you know, to guarantee that it will have conductance. And um, OK, so there's an alternative model, which is the co configurational or structural model. And was I, I first seen it in Bolobash's work in the 80s, and Molo and Reed did a lot of work on it in the 90s. And now it has, it, it's, this is the standard model in networking, I guess because it is the easiest process to, um, to simulate. And it's the following. So you start with a degree sequence, which uh, uh, in the case of parallel graphs is going to be a parallel degree sequence. And then for each degree, you make you know, the same number of mini vertices, like five mini vertices, three mini vertices, and so on. And of course, these are there's the, these clusters of mini vertices that represent real vertices. This is a mistake of PowerPoint. This edge shouldn't have been here at this point. And then what you do is that you take a perfect matching among all these uh, mini vertices, and you, uh, and, and, and you con construct a, a graph in the natural way that you, um, do I have one more? No. So that whenever you have two uh, mini vertices from one edge connecting to two mini vertices from the other, you contract these two. Uh, edges, you, you, you collapse them to being one edge, and you forget about self loops. And of course, you don't achieve the degree sequence exactly, but you achieve it approximately. It's a random graph model. And notice that the first problem that it has is that, you know, if you have a lot of small degrees, it's going to be disconnected. Okay. So here, the first problem is that you have is, is that it's going to be disconnected. And the second problem that you have is that if you have a lot of vertices that have very high degree, uh, you're going to have too many parallel edges. So for the analysis of this model, I have imposed uh, two conditions. Okay? One is that the smallest degree is at least three. Okay? So smallest degree being at least three guarantees me con connectivity almost surely. Uh, and I will show how we'll make up for this assumption. And uh, I have an assumption on the other side of the sequence that the largest degree is at most uh, square root of n. And this is, this is actually observed in real graphs. It is true in the, uh, in the growth with preferential attachment uh, model. And it just guarantees that I, that I don't have too bad uh, edge multiplicity. And otherwise, there is no restriction in the sequence. So now, what I'm going to say doesn't hold on for power low degree sequences, but for any degree sequence that the highest degree is square root of n and the lowest degree is, is 3. And here are the uh, theorems on, on conductance. Uh, so for a random graph grown with preferential attachment and degree at least 2, which I said is the smallest possible, the conductance is a constant which improved the previous result of Cooper and Fries, and for which actually not only were they getting worse conductance, that's not a big deal, but their D was like 200. Okay. And uh, the second one is that in r random graph in the configurational uh, model, uh, the conductance is 1 over log n. And I'm not sure if this is tight or not. It, th this could be constant also. This, this I get because of ma too many parallel edges. And it, it improved, you know, by many, um, uh, you know, by, by, by large factors on the uh, denominator. What do you mean? Yeah. So is this omega and O? No, this is omega. So you want the conductance to be large, 
So it's at least this much. Okay. So, all right. Um, two, just two transparencies about the proof. So what's the difficulty? So, 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 so both are counting probabilistic arguments. Uh, so where you have to define when a set is bad and then show that uh, the probability that there exists a bad set is uh, very small. Well, the difficulty in the configurational model is that you have non-homogeneity of the state space, right? So that there are some vertices that will have very high degree and some vertices that will have very low degree. And when you try to argue uh, you know, about a set that has a certain volume, how can you argue about all these vertices at the same time? But that was not a difficult uh, point to uh, overcome because if we saw it as a perfect matching, then things became a, a lot more regular and we were able to bound it by a quantity uh, which somehow says that the worst case is when all vertices have degree 3. So that was, so, so it's just a counting probabilistic argument, only you have to be uh, careful on how you do. Um, now the, the, the growth with preferential connectivity model uh, where again the difficulty is that whether there is an edge or not depends upon arrival of order of all vertices. You know, if, we, if you take a set S and its complement, uh, you know, you don't, and you want to show that this set is not bad, uh, you know, it makes a big difference, you know, what was the first vertex that contributed to the set, the second, the third, and the fourth. And, uh, the key observation was uh, to study the combinatorics and uh, of, of, of this, of how these two sequences interleave. And after this, there have been, uh, I think, more sophisticated understandings of this model in terms of polyirons. Um, yeah. So, so, so actually, uh, for the probability of a set being bad, you know, we got a wonderful formula. So for, forget this alpha k. This is, I mean, k is the size of the set. Uh, alpha is because you want to show conductance alpha. But, uh, I mean, if you forget the alpha, it's like, you know, like dk uh, divided by dn, choose dk. k is the size, k is the size of the set and, and is the number of nodes. You get very, uh, you know, very, very beautiful uh, combinatorial formulas. Um, Okay, so what this translates uh, for, for, uh, for routing is for a random graph grown uh, with preferential attachment with minimum degree 2, there is a polynomial time computable flow that routes. Now look what I did. Uh, um, I wanted to route one unit of flow between vertices i and j, so I will do much better. I will route di times dj units of flow. So it's, I mean, I mean, you can prove something stronger. With maximum link congestion and log n almost surely, so this model behaves as good as constant degree constant expanders. And uh, in the random graph, in the structural co configurational model, where the minimum degree is 3 and the maximum is square root of n, again, you can route di times dj um, uh, units of flow between vertices i and j uh, with uh, maximum link congestion n log squared n. And here it makes sense that I had di dj because I had imposed this condition to guarantee connectivity. So it is as if I'm talking about the core of the network. So you assume that an, a node that in the core of the network has degree 3 might be having three clients hanging off of him. So he, you know, he might have demand proportional um, to his degree. So, so much about routing congestion. So what we have resolved is that uh, routing congestion uh, in practice and in theory uh, scales um, nicely, not as n squared, but as n poly log n. In fact, n log n or n log n squared. Uh, this is good. And this is very practical, by the way. So there's a whole theory in economics which is called networks with externalities. And they care about these quantities. I mean, they see what is the congestion between two links uh, of the internet routing graph uh, to decide whether they will allow the corresponding ISPs to merge or not. OK, searching. Uh, how fast can you crawl the web? 
is it n polylogan or is it n cubed? All right. So now we will become a little bit abstract and we will think of this internet graph as being the web graph and moreover it's going to be undirected. So how can you crawl? What does it mean to crawl? So you go from one vertex to its neighbor to its neighbor to its neighbor and sometimes when you visit a vertex you might visit all his neighbors okay once you're there especially if it has high degree why not and you keep doing this okay and so the question is if n is the number of web pages can we crawl the uh, web in order n time worst case would be n cube time uh, if you, you want if you visit all the neighbors if it has some high degree uh -huh. do you then abandon all these tracks or do you look first or whether one of these has again high degree uh, depends if you want to go depth one or depth two we have theorems for both skins. If you go depth two, it's not very practical. It gives very nice results. But do you want to do it in like uh, constant space or something? Or, I mean, uh, the, this is in log n space, log n space. Well, I mean, if the degrees are very high, you cannot, I mean. You want to do it in log n space. I, I, mean, I mean, this is a random walk, right? So a random walk needs to remember the vertex that it's in. So each vertex, if you have n vertices, every vertex you know, needs log n bits to remember its address, so, you know. And maybe if you do this repetition, so I haven't looked at the issue of space, but I mean, this is really low space, and that's the reason why you do crawling, because it is a low. And you have to, in the definition of the problem, you put like a space constraint. If you want to like uh, visit all vertices, you can do like. Yeah, yeah you can do breadth of search, yeah. yeah. So you put like, you don't want to save more than uh, I mean, there is a space constraint. Okay. One way to, okay. Uh, I want to just understand the problem. You can only remember the neighbors and neighbors' neighbors. If you go depth two, yeah. But 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 he's asking how much space. Yeah. In in parallel graphs, you might need a lot of space. But then, I, I mean, how much space? But it depends how much of the network you discover. You know, it's not the space that you need for the process. I mean, if you need n space, but in one step, somehow you discover the whole graph, that's fine. But is crawling done, done by a random walk? Uh, by a, I, I mean, as theoreticians, that's the best we can do to abstract it. Yeah, I think it is done. Isn't it done? I mean, not is, isn't it a good abstraction? Sure. Yeah, okay. I think Priority. they have like um, some priority list or they. Oh, sure. And then they have the random jumps. And then, I mean. But the priority list does come from something like PageRank, which does look like the amount, what you would get from a random walk. But, but I agree with you. It's not, it's, it's, it's done, you've got a priority yeah. list, and you go after those things. And, and then there are many other questions, like nodes that you have visited, do you revisit or not? Uh, but, I mean, okay, so this is the abstraction that I'm using. And this is, of course, uh, equivalent to cover time and uh, um, sampling, which is what you want to do in a peer-to-peer -peer network where you're searching, is equivalent to mixing time. And... Of course, we all know that, oh, I didn't need to do this again. Of course, we all know that when the conductance is uh, bounded from below by uh, 1 over polylog n, then you can do the cover time in n polylog n. And then you can, you know, you, could, you can sample according to the stationary distribution in time polylog n. So, so as long as the um, web is an expander or a peer-to-peer -peer network that you're maintaining is an expander, you can do your searching. If you're searching by random walk, you're, you're doing well. So what did you mean by from time to time you look at the neighbors? Do you always look at all of them or what is the... Okay, so scheme one is you never look at the neighbors, okay? Scheme two is that you always look at your neighbors, okay? That's okay. What, what an actual crawl would do, because you, I mean, if you're at a website, yeah. then you create your yeah. index, right? And as soon as I'm at the website, I write right. down in my index right. the addresses 
Yes. Of yes. Everybody and peer-to-peer -peer networks do the same. Yeah. So you can do you you, you, you can call this one step. Uh, no, you don't necessarily follow up, but you follow it up implicitly. It's like one step replication. You you don't uh, you don't replicate the information, but you replicate the index. Okay. So so the question is, if you do now this one step replication as you're doing the random walk, how much are you saving? So um, th these are complicated formulas, but but they say the following: that if you have a power law graph, so let's pre let's pretend that epsilon and delta are zero. Okay, they're very small. They're they're going to be very small. Uh, so you can. If, if you do one step replication, you can, so we will pretend this is zero, you can find a constant fraction of the vertices in square root of n log n time. Okay? And the reason is, of course, that if you have a power law graph, you have enough high degree vertices, and moreover, it mixes fast, and moreover, in stationarity, these high degree vertices attract all the distribution, right? So the high degree vertices, you will go there faster, and by going there faster, you will find more information. Okay, so, so the structure of the graph helps you search much faster. So here I have drawn it in kindergarten form, okay, so that you have many vertices, uh, degree square root of n. If you have square root of n of them there, you got a constant fraction of the graph just by visiting these vertices. And you're going to visit them with much higher probability than what you're going to visit the, the low degree vertices. And if you do it, uh, if, if, if you do uh, two-step uh, uh, replication, if you go to step two, then it's even more surprising because you can find a constant fraction of the graph in n to the epsilon. So, so this is nothing in log n time. Okay. But this is, very, this is very not practical because really what the proof says and the reason why this happens is that if you look at one high degree vertex, it's going to have enough high degree neighbors, and this is the way you. So, so, and this is the way you're going to discover most of the graph. So, basically, that says that there are going to be vertices that replicate a constant fraction of the network, which is not practical. Okay. So, so one step replication is practical, and this is indeed what is happening. Two steps replication gives an interesting theorem, but it's not uh, very practical. Um, I think I'm done with searching and cover times. And my, the last thing I want to talk about is, OK, so we have somehow been convinced that having good conductance is a good property to have in, in networks. So now the question is, how, how do you maintain a well-connected topology? And the application here is in peer-to-peer -peer, uh, networks. Uh, and, and, and also, I, I, I think, in the clean slate internet of you know, the new NSF effort, but I will talk about peer-to-peer -peer networks. So what is a peer-to-peer -peer network? It's, uh, so it's this, it's distributed, decentralized, N nodes, each one is a client, each one is a laptop. And, uh, you know, because you have, so, 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 so there is limitation in the resources. So um, each, each node has resources, you know, he needs log N bits to know his address in an N node graph, so has resources uh, poly log N. Uh, typically, and so, so, so he can know only a very small size neighborhood around itself, so at most polylog n. Uh, typically, I mean, I don't know if it is polylog n or, or if it is a constant, but in today's networks, in uh, I think in Nutella, uh, uh, you know, it can be a million nodes, and then you, you always know like 15 to 20,000 nodes around you, so. Okay. And, uh, what do you want to do in these networks? So a client, you want to search for content. Um, if you are, well, in the, in the peer to peer networks that I use, I want to search for content. Uh, uh, I like European movies, I, you know, I, yeah. So, but uh, if you are Microsoft, uh, what you do in peer to peer networks is uh, you, this, what my, my student tells me is that you keep redistributing updates of the windows and the fixes and the bugs and, and so on <laughs> and so forth. So. <laughs> so okay, so um, so um, we don't redistribute the bugs. Uh, no, no, the, the the fixes, the fixes, the fixes. <laughs> okay, um, <laughs> and this <laughs> and and this now can be done. There are two. I mean, it can be done by dev, but many diff, by many different methods. But this 
two extreme uh, ways of, uh, uh, of modeling them. One is that you do it by flooding. Uh, flooding is uh, constant uh, fixed depth breadth or search. Okay? So you go like up to, typically you go five steps away from you, but here the diameter was too small, so I just drew two steps away from you. Uh, so you either do this or you do a random walk. And uh, the point is that in order for any of these schemes to be effective, you must be maintaining a uh, well-connected topology, a graph with good conductance, and uh, you know, a random graph would do the job. But how do you maintain a random graph? In particular, peer-to-peer -peer networks are especially well known to be clustered because who are you connected to? If I, if I look for European movies all the time, I'm connected, so what, what is on my cache and the people I'm connected to are other people that are looking for European movies. So they get clustered very much and they, they have been known to even disconnect uh, several times. Okay, so how do you uh, keep you know, maintaining a well-connected graph? So what Nutella does, so we have implemented the Nutella client. Well, there are other peer-to-peer -peer networks like Emul, Kaza, which are, have very good content, but they are privately owned, and it's very difficult to see what the client does. But Nutella is very easy to implement uh, 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 a Nutella client. And um, what we measured were between five, 5 and 30 requests for new connections per second per client. So I'm a client. I have usually six to 30 neighbors, this is, this is the number of neighbors of connections you can maintain, and at every second there are other people who are telling me, please drop one of your connections and connect to me. And about 1% of these requests are satisfied and existing links are dropped. So what does this mean? The work network is working in panic mode, trying to randomize, um, trying to maintain high conductance, okay? So the question is, uh, is this a reasonable strategy and is there a way to model this. Um, and uh, so, so, so the first paper that modeled this was, the, was in, in SODA um, 2004 by Cooper, Fries, and Greenhill. And they said, look, suppose you have a bad cut in a network, uh, then one way to, ra to, to, to model all this randomization that is happening while you are maintaining this, this low degrees is the following mark of chain. So two links are dropped and two links are added in their place. So you do an, an X, okay? So that maintains the degree. And you keep doing this, and you keep doing this, and if you do it enough times, you know the bad cut is, uh, disappears. So they showed that this mark of chain, uh, which I call the general two-link switch, is rapidly mixing. But this, uh, this, this uh, modeling has a problem that it, it, they were assuming that, you know, one link from here and one link from here could knew about each other and can do the exchange while these are extremely no local networks with local knowledge. So instead of this, uh, okay, so in reality the network can only switch links which are within constant distance. So we examined, um, uh, what we examined were, was just the following kind of switches. So we do, took a path of length three and we did a local exchange in the path of length three, and we did a local exchange, okay? So this is completely local. Uh, this is a Markov chain that has a lot less. Uh, but then what you're saying, because if you manage to get rid of a, of a um, small cut, mm -hmm. what you're saying is that when you randomly pick uh, three nodes, mm -hmm. uh, enough of those are going to be around the cut Mm -hmm. Because those are the ones that make a difference, right? Those are the ones that will lead to. I mean, you've you've got this small cut, right. and the only way you're going to get rid of it right. is. But if all the nodes, but if all the links are doing this all the time, yeah, then you'll get enough. But yeah. If, if this ever gets disconnected, then it will never. No, get actually, we can prove that this never disconnects the graph. While the previous result could disconnect the graph, and in that case, they couldn't do anything. So that was another advantage. Okay, uh, the mixing time is horrible. It's like n to the 48. It's horrible. So, <laughs> we're not. But uh, let me. Huh? How? Well, it is one transition here. Here, wait. So it's the usual two switch, except you make sure you're connected before you switch. So you take a path of length three, and you exchange. 
then connectivity is easy. Connectivity, connectivity is easy. Say, yeah. yeah. Just the same connectivity. Right. But you yeah. do it in parallel over all. Well, in the analysis, we do it one at a time. You pick a network random. The real network does it in parallel. But it, that doesn't help very much because if you have a running time of n to the 48, if it does it in parallel, that becomes n to the 47. So. Then the 48 is just a bound. It's, it's, it's so just it's a bound, yeah. It, it just says that this is not too... I, I mean, that this so is... Have, have you simulated this? What does it look like? Does it look Hector Garcia Molina has simulated this. It's very good. So it's, it's much faster than n to the 48. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> no, students can only do or, or, or the student, or the student's <laughs> going to be there forever, right? Yeah, well, yeah, I don't think the students would get much credit for simulating this only. Yeah, yeah Actually, they have to prove There's a different connectivity, I think, that's the connectivity of the space, that you do reach all graphs with the degree I sequence. See. You want to do that, that, that also, uh, because these are the ones that, yeah. I mean, so there are many issues, but the well, main difficulty uh, was the mixing argument. Now, if yeah. Cooper and Freeze sometimes makes and a green graph, hill. Yeah. Cooper, Freeze, and Green Hill sometimes <laughs> makes a graph disconnect. Yeah. How can they have? No, but they allow arbitrary switch. So if their graph becomes disconnected, then they allow yeah, the one link from right. here and one link from here to cross, and then it will become connected again. Right. So that's what it is. And I should I say, uh, okay, so our mixing argument is, is a Markov chain comparison argument, and we use the, uh, the Cooper, Greenhill, and Freeze, or wh whatever order. Um, uh, uh, conductance, um, okay, so this is their state space which we know has good conductance. This is our state space, which is much smaller. And we embed the bigger state space in the smaller state space with low congestion. So the difficulty was to represent, because we have much fewer, uh, much fewer uh, links, the difficulty was to represent a link of the general Markov chain to a sequence of links of the special That's Markov where chain. You lost all your huh? That's you and you would get a bad bound. You would put yours into theirs. Uh, Trying to map yours into theirs, presumably. That, well, I think that, that I think it's deteriorate. equivalent. What well, their power was also n to the forty-eight. Uh, n to the twenty-seven, maybe. I see. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but but <laughs> so 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 the point is that we had to simulate with much more restricted moves, uh, much more general moves that they were making, and in order to bound congestion. Okay, we, were, we, we, we had to get a really short path, and we got a path, you know, so the, the path could be unbounded, but, but we managed to bound the length of the path by a constant. So that was um, the difficulty. So how much time I have? What is the protocol? Uh, an, another 10 minutes. Oh, okay, that's fine. So I'll tell you one more story, and then I'll finish. So in my previous um, uh, example, uh, the the peer-to-peer -peer network, I was assuming that the clients were there all the time, and how are they going to randomize? But in real peer-to-peer -peer networks, they're dynamic, okay? So clients come and go all the time. The most difficult problem is what happens when a client leaves, and that we don't know how to address, so I shall not address it. Um, but I can address the problem of what happens when a client comes. So when he comes, which nodes should he... Uh, attached to, okay? So presumably, he knows one node. If he's going to join one network, he's going to know one node, okay? So what Law and CU from MIT proposed is that, um, uh, so, so, so if you're going to connect with degree three, from that node that you know, you start three random walks, you simulate the random walks for log n steps, and you connect the new node to the endpoints of the three random walks, okay? So, and, and they had a proof, and they proved that this, uh, you know, produces an expander, and that is overhead log n per node addition. Uh, in peer-to-peer -peer networks, log n is considered high. So we did the following. Uh, in, so, so I instead of having a node come and simulating, each node simulating log n steps of a random walk, so, Elena, yeah. Of 
I don't know, actually. I don't know. Um, I, I, what I'm telling you is the average diameter, actually, because we have, we have measured, you know, random links, how much the, the distance is. But the diameter in Nutella, I don't know what it is. Yeah. If a degree is constant, even the average diameter is yes. If, if a degree is constant, yeah. If a degree is constant, then then it's impossible to have. Yeah, I mean, then you have to have log n diameter. Okay, so we did the following different tricks. So we had three demons in the network, and they were uh, so w performing one step of a random walk, and the new uh, you know the uh, new client was attaching to that position. And then we were performing another step of the random walk, and a new client was attaching to that position. Okay, so now you see there is extreme dependency between where this client attached and where this client attached because you. How do they communicate with each other? They don't communicate. So, so I'm making the assumption that the network is maintaining these demons, oh. and the new client okay. Okay. contacts. Okay. A central place in the network, but the point the point in these networks is not that there are no central places, is that is that no central place has more computational power than anybody else. Okay, so so in a toy model, so not not exactly here, but we were able to show. Uh, quite true, right? Because if I want to steal copyrighted software, it's important I don't have a central. Yes. Yes, you're right. Yes, you're right. Yeah. You so got for, for yeah. our pushing our bugs out, it's fine. But for your finding music, it's not. Or finding movies, it's not. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Because the main reason you don't have a central authority is is legal. It's not. It's not technical. Yeah. Okay. So this you can do uh, with so 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 this results in overhead order, one per new uh, uh, node addition. And I, I thought what was interesting about this is that it is reminiscent of, um, uh, of a complexity result from the late 80s and mid 90s, uh, which was saving random, each, random bits in the simulation of BPP. Okay? So there are these results in Markov chains that say, or in complexity theory that, that, that say, that uh, if you simulate a Markov chain, you don't have to you know, wait until it mixes, take a sample, mixes, take a sample, mixes, take a sample. But you can take continuous samples and still achieve statistically uh, you know, results with similar, similar statistical properties. So we map this to saving overheads, uh, to saving overhead uh, in networks. And actually, yeah, so this was the... Uh, uh, we, we computed the second eigenvalue. So what you see is that in a random graph, uh, a random graph means you simulate log n steps. The second eigenvalue is 0 0.745, 0 0.745. The, 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 the importance is how does it scale as the size of the network scales from 10, 50, 100, you know, to uh, this, this is 1,000. So this is 5 million. And when we were doing only one step of the random walk, you see we went for 0 0.79, 0 0.79. Okay, it, in, it increases a little bit, but this is excellent scaling, you know, for so much savings that you get. And if you look at the picture of the graph, you could see that there was correlation between the nodes, and you can see this uh, because there was concentration around the diagonal, but, but overall, you were getting a random picture, you were getting a random graph. And so the point is that there were, you know, three stories. Uh, having to do with congestion, with cover time, and with uh, uh, mixing time or construction of the network, and in all of them, uh, conductance was uh, uh, was a relevant property. Um, okay, so that's the story I want. I said today, I want to talk a little bit about um, where I see this 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 work um, going. So right now. Uh, between theory and networking, at least in the academia, 
the you know most uh, um, you know the most uh, activity is what they call the clean slate internet uh, effort. So 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 there is an NSF uh, uh, and DARPA. Um, 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 desire to reconsider all principles of the design of the internet from scratch because it is so so their number one priority is security and the number two priority is routing okay so uh, and, and 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 there have been you know within the theory community two very serious NSF workshops last year on the theory of network computation to identify problems so I think that um, where the work that I talked about today fits is, you know, the general new theme of my work that I call towards topology-aware networks, so that the topology of the network is very relevant to what the network is doing or what you want the network to do. And in particular, um, algebraic methods like the ones that I talked about in the beginning, spectral methods that compute, you know, the principal eigenvectors of the underlying graph, have a major role to play. So algebraic methods have been extremely successful in many domains, you know, including uh, data mining, uh, including, uh, okay, so people who s solve large systems of differential equations. And the reason is uh, because they're com computationally very efficient, okay? So, so, so they, they rely on vector matrix multiplication, which can be implemented uh, very efficiently. And now we want to carry over these methods in systems or in networks that are very large, very decentralized. So, so all, all the effort on algebraic methods so far was relying on the fact that, you know, all your computers, all your machines were collaborating. There was no error, you know, very careful control of numerical stability. And you don't, and you lose all these properties. Okay, so once you lose all these properties, how much of these methods? Uh, carries over. And uh, okay, let me stop here. Let me leave this. Uh, I guess to give credit to my collaborators, this is a combination of theory and networking papers.